Well, uh, the last part uh, of our today, uh, today's topic is uh, market equilibrium or the market uh, by combining these two ideas of a demand and supply together. And with the help of this, we see that how the prices are uh, adjusted or settled down in the market. So let's start with the, uh, sharing with you the last part. And So you see here that we want to talk about demand and supply shocks. So for example, uh, just before going into uh, the, uh, the uh, detail about the, the demand and supply together, uh, let's uh, give a very real example from our very recent past, uh, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And in the COVID-19 due to uh, lockdowns, the demand for certain goods and services declined while uh, it increased in the other year. So for example, we saw uh, during the COVID peak time, uh, the gas prices go down very uh, low. Uh, the hotel industry, the, uh, the airline industry was severely affected uh, because their demands go down. People are not traveling. And when they are not traveling, they don't need a uh, the demand for airlines go down, the demand for hotels go down. So we saw. But on, on the other hand, we see that uh, the, we see that the demand for uh, face masks increased so much. Uh, the demand for hand sanitizers will increase so much. The, the demand for gloves uh, to wear when you go out will increase so much. So these uh, 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 these uh, utility uh, uh, the, the products which we need uh, for uh, our uh, medical uh, requirements increases uh, so much. Uh, so we see that the demand and supply change because of this uh, pandemic. Uh, we also observe that uh, the uh, Canadian government uh, provides relief to their uh, uh, citizen uh, through income support. Uh, and regular incomes have suddenly disappeared. The increased spending financed by borrowing. And uh, when the borrowing increased, so definitely the government is going to uh, issue bonds in order to cover that borrowing and uh, in order to borrow. So, so there are different types of bonds market. Uh, the supply will increase for the bonds. And so that, that's logic. Now, as, as I mentioned that supply and demand, when we combine these two, we will talk about the market. So what is a market? Market is any mechanism through which the buyer and uh, seller interact, uh, negotiate, and, uh, and uh, the transaction of some goods and services. Markets may differ in degree of competition. In the beginning, I mentioned we assume that the market is competitive, uh, and this uh, competition varies. Uh, it can be a very competitive and we call it as a perfectly competitive market and it can be a, a less competitive like a very few sellers. Uh, we call them as an oligopoly. Uh, but if there is no competition like a one single seller, then we call it as a monopoly. So in a perfectly competitive market, uh, the buyers and sellers are price takers. They take the price from the market and who is determining that price because of this demand and supply. So neither the borrower, uh, the buyer, neither the nor the uh, seller is setting the price. The, the price is set through market mechanism. And what is that mechanism is, then we see here, we are combining all the data. Uh, these are the prices. On these prices, uh, these are the demand, a quantity demanded, and these are quantity supplied. Now, uh, when the price is very low, like a $20 uh, uh, dollars per bushel, uh, then we see that the quantity supplied is low and the quantity demanded is very high. So it means that there is a uh, excess demand. And when the price further increase, the quantity supplied increase, quantity demanded decrease. So the gap is reducing, but still the, quant the quantity uh, demand is excess. At the price of 60 particular, we see that the quantity demanded is uh, 65 and quantity supplied is also 65 and there is no gap. So that is the point where the, the one who is willing to buy at the price of 60, uh, 60 uh, is getting that. And the one who is willing to sell at the price of 60 is selling it. And by this way, there is no excess demand. There is no excess supply. Below this point, uh, when 
the prices are um, further increased, uh, what is happening? The excess supply because the price is attractive for the seller, but it is less attractive for the buyer. So that's why there is an excess supply. So we see that there is an excess supply, there is an excess demand, uh, and there is a one point which we call it as an equilibrium price, equilibrium demand. And that is also what we call it as a price clearing, uh, uh, the uh, market clearing price and the demand. Uh, so we see here at the 60, uh, the market is clear. So market clear at equilibrium. So when we combine these two uh, curves, what we discuss uh, separately uh, and uh, the schedule of demand and supply together, so we get it that there is a, a point which is uh, called as a market clearing or equilibrium point. Now, the market is not always at the equilibrium. Uh, because of change in uh, many other factors, what we discussed that cause can can cause the shift of a demand curve or the uh, supply curve. So we see here one by one that if there is an increase in demand, means that shifting the demand curve to the right, or if there is a decrease in demand, shifting the demand curve to the left, what is an impact on the quantity and the price? Uh, or uh, we also see to, uh, to see the impact of a shift of a uh, supply curve to the right or to the left. So we these are the four scenarios we are going to look at it with these diagram. So if we we'll just look uh, the the left side panel and we see here that this is our supply curve, the solid red line, and this solid blue line is our uh, demand curve. And by this way, we have an equilibrium. And that's an initial equilibrium, we call it. Uh, and quantity is Q0 and the price is P0. Right now, one scenario is that increase in demand and we shift the demand curve to the right. It can be because of uh, increase in income, because of change in other price, uh, price of other goods, or because of uh, change in uh, expectation, or because of change in uh, severe weather condition, or because of change in population, or because of change in uh, uh, <clears throat> any other reason. Right? So, we see that here. Um, uh, we see shift now. This shift is causing what? increase in price as well as increase in quantity, equilibrium quantity. So with this increase in demand, uh, increase the uh, equilibrium price and increase the equilibrium uh, quantity because that's our, our new equilibrium. The second scenario, what we are assuming here uh, is decrease in demand. When the demand curve decrease, uh, when the decrease, when the demand decrease, the demand curve shift to the left. And we see here as, so in this case, we see very clearly that the prices go down and the quantity also go down. So means that the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity go down or market squeeze. Uh, on the other, uh, the right-hand panel is explaining that if uh, initial equilibrium is E0 here and when the supply increase, what is happening? The prices go down, the quantity increase. And when the supply decrease, like S2 move to the uh, left, and we see that the prices increase, quantity decrease. So these are the things what we want to explain change in equilibrium by uh, because of the shift of uh, supply or the demand curve. Uh, what's uh, what is a uh, uh, relative price and inflation? So normally, when we measure the inflation in any country, that is a relative price. That's a price which we uh, we say that how much the the price of a uh, basket is going to change. Uh, that's what we call it as an inflation. Uh, the absolute price of any product or a service is the money what we are paying for it. So must be spent to acquire one unit of that product. That's a, what we call it as an absolute price. But relative price is the price of a one good in terms of another goods. Like uh, how much uh, apples we have to sacrifice to get uh, any other fruit or any other vegetable. So that's the relative price that we are losing this uh, quantity and uh, to get uh, the other one because we have a limited income. And that's why the inflation is measured like this. So demand and supply curves are drawn in uh, drawn in terms of a relative price rather than the absolute prices. Uh, the last thing which is important to remember here uh, that uh, which I 
touch in the beginning as well in the part one uh, when we were discussing uh, the demand, the market. The market is um, competitive market. So here we will discuss the some uh, reasons that why it is important to that the market should be of a competitive nature. The, the theory of demand and supply can be used to explain change in supply and demand in many markets. Uh, as, as I explained you, it's a very simple but very uh, uh, effective model. So, but the model has a, a important limitation and cannot use uh, cannot be usefully applied to the market for a number of consumer products. So, uh, and the very good example quoted here is why apples but not iPhones. So, why the apples are uh, 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 the price is changing with the change, uh, the quantity demanded is changing with the change in price, but not for not so for uh, for iPhones. Uh, the reason here is. Uh, the three conditions for a competitive market because Apple is uh, uh, when we buy and sell apples, it's a very competitive market because thousands of uh, farmers are growing apples in their orchards. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, iPhone is a one product, is a unique product produced by a one seller, which is uh, Apple uh, Corporation. So these conditions must be satisfied for price discrimination and determination in the market to be well described by the demand and supply. Large number of consumers, um, each one small relative to the size of the market. Large number of producers, each one small to the relative size of the market. So I just explained to you that the buyers are many for Apple and definitely for iPhone as well. Uh, but the producer for Apples are many, but for iPhone it's one producer. Uh, producers must be selling homogeneous versions of the product. Apple, you know, there are different types of apples, but when we take a one app type of an apple, so it can, we cannot identify whether it is produced in a form A or a form B or a form C. Uh, but iPhone, we know that there is an iPhone, which is very specific with specific uh, uh, features and the other one is different. So that that's, that's a very uh, heterogeneous or uh, very uh, identifiable or uh, differentiated product as compared to apples. So we see that these are the conditions we must have to see uh, whether the market is competitive or not. So by this way, we summarize the whole uh, supply and demand model. We just discussed the demand first and then supply and then combine these together to see that how the prices are determined in the market. Uh, but the market should be of a competitive nature. Uh, uh, Non-competitive uh, markets like an oligopoly or a monopoly, the prices are not determined like the demand and supply forces. So we see that in a competitive market, the price is determined by the market and the buyers or sellers are selling and buying at that price. So I hope you uh, like it, this uh, uh, whole uh, uh, discussion about the demand and supply. Uh, please do write your uh, suggestions and uh, comments uh, below. Thank you.